Welcome to another edition of the Corner Booth Podcast here from the Stoughton Deli. I'm Aaron Rand, along with Bill Brownstein of the Montreal Gazette, and our special guest today, Philip J. Fournier, from the website 338canada.com, qc125.com, uh, and you describe yourself uh, beyond the person who created these sites uh, as someone who analyzes data. That's right. Okay. Well, let's talk political data. Then. <laughs> let's, let's that do is it. a story we have. We've talked to all the uh, provincial leaders over the past couple of weeks, and and I think Bill except and I were for chatting, one. except for one. <laughs> yeah. We were chatting earlier uh, about this most recent poll, which somehow, and it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense, <laughs> but you're saying that if an election were to be held in Quebec now, yeah. that the Liberals, despite the fact they do not have a leader, would actually end up with the second most seats. So that's a huge change. What happens here? Well, uh, the, the Liberals have a, a chunk of very safe seats that in, in Mon mostly Montreal and Laval, uh, in Outaouais, that uh, we still project Liberal because they, they, the Liberal support has not moved in Quebec since the election. It's around 15%. Uh, it's low among Francophones, but uh, that's why outside of those regions, the Liberals are nowhere to be seen. Quebec City, Eastern Townships, they're nowhere to be seen. Uh, it's just that, think of the last election in 2022. The CAQ won 90 seats, the PQ won three. That's 93 seats together. Take away Laval because I think the CAQ won those by, uh, by default because the Liberals were so weak. Uh, so you have maybe 85 seats at the National Assembly that will be fought over between the Parti Québécois and the CEQ. And then there's the rest. <laughs> and then the rest goes mostly to the Liberals and Quebec Solidaire. And so the only movement we have seen in public opinion in Quebec is the uh, Parti Québécois taking support away from right. the CEQ. That's it. But That's you the also, only movement. But you also have the Liberals taking seats from the CAC. Well, I think here's the, if this Liberals remain stable, but the CAC has lost 15 points, that means the Liberals could win back Hall, could win back most of Laval, could win back Chateau Gay. Uh, so those traditionally Liberal seats that the Liberals would still would win back just because, uh, by default, because the CAQ has fallen. But the point being that uh, w this is without a leader. What happens if they get a leader? A real leader, yeah. yeah. Uh, Does well, that change the game? It could change the game because, as we saw this week, there was the budget in Quebec City. Oh, yes. A uh, big deficit for the CAQ. It's, it's not as outrageous as some have made it to be. I mean, in percentage of GDP, it's not that high, right. even though it catches the eye. 11 billion catches yeah. the eye. Uh, there's right there the blueprint for a liberal comeback, if there ever is one. Liberals could say, we gave you surpluses and you spent everything. <laughs> if the liberals don't use this opportunity to go back up in public opinion, uh, nothing will. But they, they must right now really regret having their leadership race so late. But by um, the same token, so, this is interesting because so $11 billion yeah. deficit to which the premier, of course, said it's not. It's really $8.8 .8 billion. Billion. That's right. Billion. But uh, I wonder, it's 2024. There's no provincial election for two more years. People have short memories in politics, That's true. I think, right? That's true. And there is a school of thought suggesting that, you know what, maybe they announced an $11 billion deficit so that in a year from now, or in two years from now, they can say, oh, look, now it's only three billion. Look how well we've done. Do you put much thought in that? Uh, you know what? That is a good point. Maybe there's part of strategy in there. It's true that you're always better off giving the bad news early in the mandate than later in the mandate, that's for sure. But it also hinges on the economy getting better and the interest rate <laughs> rates going down. Yeah. I think the Trudeau liberals are also banking on that. There's uncertainty. There are factors that you don't control. But I, I mean, I'm not an economist and I don't pretend to be one, so I'll, I'll thread lightly here. Uh, the the, the CEQ lost 20 points last year. They had the 2023 was an awful year for them. It started in Quebec City with the troisième lien, broken promise. And then it was blunder after blunder. And even though it was a small amount of money, the Los Angeles Kings story no. in November yeah. really yeah. left a mark. And it just so happened, and it was a coincidence, that the poll that I commissioned, I didn't do the poll, I'm not a pollster, but I commissioned a poll uh, with Palace Data. He's a Toronto guy, really knows what he's doing, understands Quebec. And we agreed weeks prior to a field date in November. And the field date started the day after the King's announcement. <laughs> and I remember like, oh, okay, so this is going to be weird. And then the, the results came back and he 
the, the pollster, Joseph, his name is, Joseph and Galano, call me, he's like, what's going on in Quebec? I have the PQ leading. Am I, am I dans le champ? Am I, am I really lost here? And I says, well, they, it's not like the CEQ really ha- helped themselves in the past recent, recent months, right? So, uh, and so we've seen this shift uh, towards the Parti Québécois from the CEQ. And right now, the CEQ would win between 20 and 30 seats. Which is less than the Liberals, you predict. Yeah, Yeah. less than the Liberals, and it's also losing two-thirds of your caucus. But the other... And ending up, by the way, with a PQ majority. With a PQ. Well, well, that's the other interesting aspect. That's right. Uh, It's it's, uh, potentially in November, but the newest polls that we had in 2024 have the PQ uh, much closer to minority like closer to what Pauline Marois had in okay. 2012. How, like, it's one thing when you, you, you be leading in the polls on a certain level, but uh, how does that transfer to seats? And where do they pick up? Where does the PQ, uh, certainly at the expense of the CAC, but where else do they pick up all those seats to put them in that position? Well, here's the thing. There's really, Quebec, I like to say, and it, I know it pisses off a lot of people, but Quebec is multinational. There's Montreal, the greater Montreal, and there's everything else, right? But, uh, the C- out of Montreal, right now, in the, the current electoral map in Quebec, uh, there are um, 27 seats in Montreal, take six in Laval, so there's like 90 seats outside of Montreal, and the CEQ won 88 of them last election. Right. Well, the PQ would take a chunk out of that. They basically took 15 points away from the CAC in Quebec City. They took about 15 to 20 points in the regions, so think of Abitibi, Saguenay, down to St. Lawrence, uh, and some... Mauricie as well, and so in this in the four five zero, the suburbs of Montreal. That there's a, a switch. The the CAQ won the suburbs of Montreal by thirty points in the election, and right now they're tied with the Parti Québécois according to the polls. So, the, 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 some something's got to give, right? If you lose that many points in a in a in a, a seat rich region like the five quatre cinq zero, but you know another interesting that that came out of all these polls is that one out of four. Uh, PQ supporters aren't yeah. independentist. Yeah. Does that surprise you, though? Because it's... it's, it's Does it surprise you? It, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Uh, the the average francophone Quebec, like the median francophone Quebec, <laughs> wants the Parti Québécois in power without a referendum. And they had the CAQ. And they had the CEQ. That's what the CEQ started right. being, right? right. Uh, and then the CEQ became like... You no, know, they're... they're, they're, they're Accountants that say, "Okay, we're going to manage the Quebec like a, you know, like it's a company, like doing what the Liberals have been doing for right. part of uh, part of their history, recent history." And so the CQ became this blend of what Quebecers like the most about both parties, and that's why they've been so dominant since they won in 2018. But now this this new shiny, this new government smell has, is gone, yeah. and they look they look like part of the establishment. Now they are the establishment, and they look old. And um, they're gonna be. I mean, the real danger for the CEQ right now is if the Liberals pick a, a good leader, like a young, dynamic leader I mean, like that a, talks like about a Denny the like a Denny No, yeah, <laughs> absolutely not. Okay. not. Okay. absolutely not. I'm sorry, Mr. Kadai, but no. If but can I wins the leadership somehow. Uh, just bury this party because it's not going to come back. You know, to Bill's point about one in four people supporting the PQ, not supporting yeah. a referendum, we had Paul St. Pierre Plamondon yeah. on the podcast a few weeks ago, and, you know, he seems to make uh, a lot of credible points. Very charismatic. Yeah. And very yeah. understated as well. Yeah. Not typically, you know, what you might expect. But when you suggest that the PQ is picking up all these seats, do you have the sense that people don't understand that if you vote for a PQ, there will be a referendum. He is not going to change his mind. Um, well, we've heard this tune before, haven't we? Yes. I mean, les, les conditions gagnantes and l'assurance morale de le gagner. That was Bernard Landry. And then Pauline Marois came to power saying, oh, maybe we'll do a referendum or maybe we won't. And so I think it's not front of mind for many Quebecers. And the... the if the Parti Québécois goes into the, le- the election campaign in 2026 and they repeat ad nauseum every day, referendum, referendum, yeah. referendum, they will hurt themselves. They have to have a plan because this is the Article 1 of the party and there's still like, like 35% of Quebecers that would support uh, and, uh, independence for Quebec. So this is a big chunk. I mean, the Parti Québécois had 15% of the vote in the election. Sovereignty was still at 35 so right. they figured, well, the easy pickings, right. the lower hanging fruit would be, okay, let's get back those voters, let's bring him home. And then 
worry about that later. But uh, as we get closer to 2026, we'll have much more polling on Quebec independence. If it's in the 40s, yeah, he will campaign on it. And he said, well, did, we have a whole new generation who hasn't had the opportunity to vote on right. this topic. And then they can bring out the whole semantics thing, say sovereignty association. You know, I, I love those kinds of euphemisms. Yeah, you know, the, well, we'll see. We'll which see. is CAC, basically, is sovereignty association on a certain level. Yeah, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's fair. I mean, I also asked, when I was at the Quebec uh, Solidaire Convention back in November, and I asked Nadeau Dubois, I interviewed him, like half of your supporters don't support sovereignty, right? Not your members, but your supporters. Right. It's like, how do you feel about that? What does that say about your party? And he, the answer was similar to what Monsieur Plamondon told you. It's like, yeah, but they're, we don't hide the fact that we're sovereignists, and they still vote for us. So p perhaps they like our policies, but perhaps they right. can be convinced. Um, uh, you have to ride. Uh, I mean, the Parti Québécois has no choice but to ride on sovereignty. That's that's the, what uh, differentiates them from the rest. You know, you brought up Quebec Solid Air. I, we, I think, we sat here wondering after speaking to uh, Gabriel Nadeau Dubois, who very personable young man. Yeah. But what's happened to QS? They've basically <laughs> fallen off the map. It, it does happen every election, though, right? They they they're big into in the campaign. Uh, we 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 pay attention to them, and then. No, the real politics arrives, and then they become just one of the, the other parties of the National Assembly. I don't have an answer to you right now, but they're doing fine. I mean, for their sake, compared to what they're, they're used to, they have 16, 17 percent of voting intentions. They could win several more seats if the election was held. I mean, they could have 15 or 16, which would they make them a recognized party officially. Uh, they are a recognized party, but they had to negotiate some tricks because they only had 11. The threshold is 12 at the National Assembly. Uh, they're doing fine. It's just they're no they're nowhere close, close to power. I mean, and we know that. Though. And then, of course, there's our, our good friend Eric Duhem, Eric Duhem uh, provincial yes. conservatives who Talks a great game, you know, fighters, Very articulate. scored some big points, sending a letter, yeah. asking the LA Kings to send the check back. Uh, <laughs> but yet the Conservatives don't seem to be getting much in the way of strength either, are they? Yeah, but they haven't lost either. Uh, they had 12.9% of the vote in the last election. This is where they're at in the polls mm -hmm. right now. This is within a point or two, this is where they're at. Uh, they're strong in Quebec City and Chaudière Appalaches. I mean, if an election right now would be held, Zuem would probably win between five or ten seats. He would. It was an aberration that he didn't win any seats right. because the CEQ was just so strong right. everywhere. Uh, but um, he also, I think, Monsieur Zuem will learn from the past election. Uh, where was he in the last weekend of the campaign? You may remember this. He was in Pointe Claire trying to woo. Angle like English you, voters, right? right? The English right. voters. Yeah. And yet, that was the last weekend of the campaign. And he lost both now by 200 votes. So this is just was bad stra strategy, bad campaigning. He had no precise data where the hotspots were. Had he known, oh, you're 200 votes away from winning a seat in both sure. now, he would have spent the last weekend there knocking on doors. But maybe it was over overconfidence. Maybe it was just bad data. I don't know. But I, I have very little doubt that his party will win seats in the future. I have one, one question. Well, we want to move on because yeah. we want to cover yes, so as well. Yes, there's so many <laughs> other. How, how much of, in, in politics in general, is the fact that this party has now been in power for six or seven years and people ultimately tire of the party in power? They just want to change. It just happens every cycle. At some point, Pol the politician's bag of tricks runs out and, uh, you know, the folksy charms that Legault had um, for most of his first term and during the pandemic, uh, le père de la nation, you've heard this, right? Uh, it worked, but at some point it doesn't. And when you make strategic mistakes like they did last year, the broken promise in Quebec City, the third link, I mean, all the journalists, and there was a huge report on this in L'Actualité, that the, the, the project never made sense. But they pushed it and they pushed it and they pushed it and they sold it to Quebec City voters and they did very well in two elections with Quebec City voters and then just out of the blue, oh yeah, it doesn't make sense, we won't do it. Yeah. Y y you don't you don't get a second chance. Right. It was his water right? Uh, well, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it hurt. I mean, I think it was the sound decision. Right. But, but the way they handled timing. it was so bad. And right. then six months later, Monsieur Girard, with his big old smiles, with Luc Robitaille, with uh, money for their kings, uh, 
So, okay. so there's time to recover, but I mean, the wear and tear of time. The, the Corner Booth Podcast is brought to you in part by the Snowden Delicatessen, where we are. 75 years in business, the home of Montreal's greatest smoked meat, plus Carnotzel, potato latkes, and the famous Snowden Deli party sandwiches. That's the Snowden Delicatessen. Where do we go? Municipal or federal? What, what pleases <laughs> well, you? Well, I, I want to just, I want to bring up federal only yeah. because I saw a statistic this week that I don't think I've ever seen before. Right. Oh, yeah. Which actually shows that if an election were going to be held now, federally, the liberals would actually be behind the federal conservatives in a provincial election. In, in Quebec. In what? Quebec. Yeah. Have you ever and seen And in Ontario before? by a huge amount. I go back to Stephen Harper. I mean, when, when yeah. did that ever happen? 2011, uh, the Liberals finished behind the uh, Conservatives, but it was the NDP. It was Jack Layton who was first right. place. Um, we haven't seen that much. It happened a Mulroney few times. Mulroney years. Mulroney years, but that you have to go back 40 years, yeah. right? Um, so it's... But the thing is, all right, very important to remind ourselves that polling between elections test the mood of the electorate. It, it's, it's not a prediction of the future. It's a projection of what's going on right now. So uh, a lot of people, a lot of Canadians, all the, the indicators are flashing red <laughs> that uh, people are tired of Justin Trudeau and the Liberals. They've been in, in power for almost a decade. And so something's got to give at some point. And, uh, Pierre Poiliev is, uh, you may like or dislike him, and when the numbers show that Canadians are lukewarm, the, ba the conservative base loves him. But Canadians are on average are lukewarm about Pierre Poiliev, but at least he's talking about the main issues that are important, like the, the housing file has been bungled on by the Liberals, and Pierre Poiliev, build the homes, all the slogans, yeah. uh, they, they resonate with many voters, especially with young voters. Uh, young voters who find themselves, oh, the rent is 2000 month, uh, 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 2000 a month, and uh, oh, interest rate make it so that I can't buy a house until unless I margin my, my, mortgage myself for a century. Um, n not that it's necessarily the liberals' fault, but it happened on their watch, and you can be sure that it, it had it happened on the conservative watch, the liberals and the sure. NDP would say the same thing. Were Justin so. Trudeau to leave, would that help? Uh, it, we don't know. Uh, it could help, but. Uh, <sighs> Like, who would replace him? That's the thing. Uh, I don't think there are good contenders for 2025. There could be con good contenders for 2030 or 2034. We won't. It's a we'll long way see. down. It's road. a long way down. We'll but there's a lot of support in, in that period. That's true. But in Canada, <clears throat> usually when you gain power, you keep it for a decade. There are precedents. Um, there are exceptions, but there are many precedents for that. Uh, and uh, yes, so, so, so the liberal base in Quebec has melted by about 7 to 10 points. 12 points, according to other polls, you have the average amount. out. That means that every cabinet minister, save maybe François-Philippe Champagne, would lose their seat wow. if an election was out right wow. now. They, a cabinet minister outside of Montreal, should I say. Yeah. And that's the same François-Philippe Champagne, that name has been floated as a possible provincial liberal leader. Yeah, well, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if, if he wants it. Um, because he has a good seat. Saint-Maurice-Champlain Saint is a good seat for the federal liberals. Uh, should he come to Quebec City to try to lead the Quebec liberals? Where would he run? He, he shouldn't run in Mauricy because he's going to lose. There's no short-term plan for the liberals to go back up in the regions of Quebec. It's going to take yeah. more than one cycle. Have you heard a name? So we were kind of kidding around about Danny <laughs> Kader. Are, are you hearing a name being bandied about? Because we haven't heard anybody. Yes, Other I, than Fred Beauchemin, who's already yeah. said he would run. Uh, here's the thing. I think uh, there's a narrative in, in media, in lots of media, that say, oh, people are not uh, you know, running towards the, PQ, uh, the, the PLQ leadership. Uh, on se pousse que le pas aux portes, right? We're waiting for Marois Risky also. Well, yeah. the thing is, the race is like 15 months from now. Yeah. So a normal person needs to work, needs to earn a living. And so you're not going to say a year, 15 months from the, from the leadership, say, oh, I'm, I'm going to quit my job and sure. start running again. So there are names, and I've heard names. I cannot say them. Uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I've heard many names. Uh, interesting ones. It's just that uh, it's too early. And I don't know what, what the liberals were thinking, saying we're going to have a race in 2025. I think they were thinking the CQ was invincible. But just imagine if, while the CQ was bungling in 2023, if they the Liberals had somebody. Sure. Had somebody. Um, so it was a big mistake. I'm looking at the Alberta NDP right now. Rachel Notley uh, uh, resigned in January, new leader in June. Boom. 
That's how you do it. Uh, the Quebec Liberals uh, accumulated mistakes so over the past year. Tactical mistake. Oh yeah, by having big them. time. And so, speaking of the NDP, though, like in uh, federally yeah, speaking, that's right. What do we see there? Nothing. <laughs> we see no change. 18, 19, 20 percent. Uh, the, 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 what's dramatic about the federal NDP is that despite the Liberals having lost nine, ten points and uh, having their caucus in the projection, they lose half of their caucus. Right. The NDP is not picking up any points. It's the Conservatives that get, that's taking everything. And so uh, Monsieur Singh has been okay for the base. He hasn't been able to grow the base. It's going to be a, his third election. And when you think about it, Monsieur Maltier had one try. He had one shot, and then the, the NDP base got rid of him. Uh, Jack Meet Singh will have three shots. And uh, I, I, there's, there's no sign that the NDP could make gains. They won't, make, they won't have suffered too many losses, as the numbers are right now, but there's no gains for the NDP right now. Can I ask, you know, there was a great quote this week by Justin Trudeau, who actually got a little worked up, but he said, it's not my job to be popular, yeah, it's yeah. not important for me he's to be popular. He's succeeded very well. Yeah, he's so far, <laughs> that, that's been coming true for him. I, I just wonder how important, you know, you mentioned Pierre Polyev, yeah. and the fact that, you know, if you're not part of the base, people are kind of lukewarm to him. Yeah. Has Justin Trudeau worn out his welcome in terms of people looking at him going, I, don't, I can't see him as the next prime minister? The numbers say so. The numbers say so. His uh, unfavorables and favorables, the, 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 the approval rating that we see from several polling firms all put uh, the PM, Monsieur Trudeau, in the red. And the, it, once that happens, it's, it's really hard for a party to get back up because it's not that they dislike or hate Monsieur Trudeau, some people do, but it's just that they're not listening to him anymore. And, and internationally, and, uh, he's lost his uh, charm, his uh, magnetism. Like, like he's, he doesn't sit at the big boys' table when it comes to international politics. I've noticed even New York Times have taken shots. Uh, all the people who were in love with when Gaga for him at the beginning have since yeah. uh, lost interest. But that's the wear and tear of time, yeah. right? That's I, I think that's not unique to Monsieur Trudeau. Uh, right. That's true, but. Uh, and I don't think it resonates much at home, except for people who already dislike him. Right. They will find reasons. So we've that. covered provincial. We've taken a bang at federal here. <laughs> Let's talk about what's happening in Montreal. Municipal okay, politics. That, that's a yeah. good one. Leger poll a week ago, commissioned by Proje Montréal. Uh, of which we don't know the contents. Yeah, we, we know but, what they did. We just don't know what, it, but what yet, the results were. But yet, one of the names bandied about is very interesting, Melanie Jolie, speaking about <laughs> federal people who might lose their jobs. Uh, well, she came close to winning the last one. She's, no one. she's not going to run. She, she, she has a, a good seat. She will win her seat uh, federally if she right. stays. And she could even maybe think of being the next federal leader if Justin Trudeau stays really? until the election, loses the election, he resigns. Then there's going to be a leadership race and to be the leader of the official opposition. She could run on that. So does she, I mean, that's, here's the thing. If Melanie Jolie decides to come to to City Hall, to fight for City Hall, how is she going to fight Valérie Plante? Because I, I have the feeling that they would agree on most things. <laughs> Bring out a bigger bicycle? <laughs> uh, well, uh, that, that would be one thing. Uh, but uh, is, is, Madame Plante is not going to get outflanked on the left, even though left right in principle politics no, is very point. different. Good point. Uh, yeah. it's, it's going to be somebody uh, that will rile up people of the surroundings of uh, I, I, uh, as much Point Claire as Point Au Tremble, uh, because uh, the Plateau, Ashlaga Maison Neuve, Rosemont, they're, they're, they will support Projet Montréal in big numbers. But so you better be ready. She's vulnerable, though. She, well, she is because she's 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 at the end of a second term. But I, in the list of names that we saw in La Presse, Dominique Anglade. <laughs> Dominique, Dominique Antlad got the worst results in the history of the Liberal Party, and then but her, her seat name became QS. Yeah, yeah it is, there's no way. And why, why would she do that? She's a millionaire. Why, why, why would she, why would she uh, suffer the pain of going back to municipal uh, to, to uh, municipal politics? I, I, well, I don't so see let's it. look at that list. What did you? Who did you think was viable on that yeah. list? <sighs> well, nobody, nobody there, nobody. I, I, I didn't see anybody that could take down that account. Uh, really? Good luck. I mean, uh, what's his name? Monsieur Leblanc of the Chamber of Commerce yeah. of Montreal. Sure, I'm sure he's a s smart man. I don't know him personally. I'm sure, I mean, he's an experience in. But not that well known as far as public but is concerned. How are you going to get those votes? Yeah. How are you going to get those votes? You have to break this. this the center of Montreal will vote for Projet Montréal. And they, I mean, 70% of uh, Rosemont La Petite Patrie. And uh, I mean, so who's going to beat Valérie Plante? 
I think it's Valérie Plante that could have a bad campaign. Danny Coderre. Danny Coderre. Oh, I like to get his name in as often as I can. I'm sorry. No. Yeah. I, I think he does, I don't think he don't want. He wants to suffer the humiliation anymore. You but, surprised uh, by the way? I mean, maybe it's a fair question to ask. We talked about you know people eventually tire of parties or, yep. or politicians. Yeah. Here she is running for a third term. That hasn't happened in Montreal in a long, long time. Yeah. What about she that? Not, did you let Tambly do do three terms? No, I think he did two. Two. Two, two and change. Yeah. 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 Um, well, the thing is, if she, f if Miss, Miss Plant feels that she could be beaten, like soundly beaten next year, uh, there are chances that she could say, you know what, I had my two, I had my uh, two, I had my two mandates, and I won them fair and square, uh, and she could decide to leave. But I don't know. I looked at the list of uh, people against her, and it's like hey, this is going to be an easy win for Miss Plant if she faces. I mean, I heard the name Pal Pablo Rodriguez. I mean, okay. But all the guys, his has name recognition. Yeah. He's from San Leon now, so it's a, uh, it's interesting. But what would he suggest differently from how Projet Montréal runs things? I I, I don't know. Um, there are many things to blame on Projet Montréal and City Hall in Montreal. It's just that I don't see a winning campaign really. Like you're gonna say you're gonna tighten up finances. It, it, it's not really sexy. Uh, you know, okay. uh, was a, a pink metro line was sexy, uh, well, having bagpipes. I came here happen. today, I live in, in Rosemont, and I came here today uh, all entirely riding bike paths that are secure. For me, that's pretty Hold on. cool. You, you rode your bike here today? Well, it's an electric bike, but it's still a bike, yeah. Yeah. Okay, wow. Yeah. It's good It's good for your health, then yeah. I don't have to go to the gym anymore, so I just do that instead. Okay, so you'll be voting for, for Valerie Plante. Uh, that's, not what I'm, that's not what I'm saying, <laughs> I'm just saying that, uh, it, but Denis Coderre tried to run City Hall, the way I don't, the mayor of Chicago ran the city in the 40s. Yeah. Like, we're going to make this city shine worldwide. And Projet Montréal came in and says, we're just going to do smart urban design. We're going to do sidewalks and bike paths and, and close trees. the mountain road. But they road. have managed to upset an awful lot of people <laughs> yes. with what they Downtown decided to do. Downtown is a disaster. Yeah, and, and worse than that, if you if you talk about the road that Camille Yen Wood, yes. yeah. you know, the, the story on that public consultation, the largest one ever conducted by yeah. the city, which they then took and said, well, thanks, but no thanks. I mean, yeah. that rubs a lot of people the wrong it's, way. It's true. Yes. Yeah. I, I don't disagree. It's just, <clears throat> I, it, will, that, will that be the, the end yeah. of Projet Montréal? Um, I don't know. I but don't forget the voter turnout last election. Forty-three percent. Yeah, that, that's not great. And it was—I think it was in low forties. the, yeah, the time she exactly. beat Kadai. Well, like so. as we recall, Melody Jolly, who no one knew at no the time, knew. came very close to winning that election. She did. Yeah. She did. It's going to be a fun race because we don't know who. I mean, if Valérie Plante decides to go, who's going to replace her with Projet Montréal? That I think is the most interesting part uh, because. I've heard names, and uh, you could have somebody maybe from Quebec Solidaire coming in, say, you know what, I've had enough of National well, Assembly. Well, actually, we talked about so. that with Monsieur Nadeau Dubois. And, uh, what about someone like Benoit Doré, fairly well known? Yeah, uh, maybe. Not but, the same, but uh, like, remember, uh, Nadeau Dubois did not discount that possibility. Yeah. I mean, could you imagine Gabriel Nadeau Dubois mayor of Montreal one day? I could. I could. Well, if he, 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 he realized that his party in Quebec City is not He did is say no to that. Remember? No, he did not say no. Yeah. 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 No? All right. Okay, I'll say no. I won't. No, I there's won't one area we have to do. We can't get a, leave you go on American politics. Trump. Yeah. I mean, talk to us. Well, let me ask the first question. Michelle Obama, will she run? <laughs> Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Biden, unless he dies, will be there. Yes. So let's, let's start with this. Um, American polling is really not that good. We know. As we found out in the last election, <laughs> yes. right? I mean, it's it's um, there are good firms. It's just that there's tons of noise in Canada. We have maybe ten to twelve really good posters, so it's easy to to put in the corner. Says we'll listen to them. There are hundreds of posters in the United States, and many of them are not really good. And so the the trick is to average them out. In 2020, I covered the presidential election. I had it on my, my website. Yeah. I called 48 states correctly. Uh, and one of them was really close. I had North Carolina going Mr. Mr. Biden and Mr. Trump won it by one point. So, uh, so if we average them out, it, it works well. But right now, we're too far away from the election. Uh, there are a lot of people that are angry about what's going on in the world, so they vent. They vent in polls, but when they come to the ballot box, sometimes they... We'll see in October, in September and October, when we get closer to the election, how it goes. But. Uh, I don't think Mr. Trump has increased his support since he lost in 2020. 
Uh, so if the Democrats are able to keep their base and motivate the, the, the suburbs of swing states, uh, they, they should uh, turn out okay. But it, it is, uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a nasty one, I think, but south of the border. But I've been seeing is uh, Biden's like five points down, or the Democrat. Uh, well, on average, he's not. Some polls he's in, but you see, that's out, the it's point. Tight. It's like you go to some and then you go yeah. to other. I don't know. What what are your like analyzing all the polls yeah. you've seen so far? What do you see? There won't be a landslide for either side. Right. Whoever wins is going to win by this much, and I'm signaling with my fingers a very small okay. amount. Right. American elections in the 21st century have all been close except for the first Obama win. And so we should not be surprised that the, the people will vote Republican no matter what. Some people will vote uh, Democrats for no matter what. And you have this five points in the middle that, that, you have to, that you have to convince and get their vote out. What about Robert Kennedy Jr. Yeah. there? Yeah. Even with Aaron Rodgers? And with Justin Aaron Rodgers. On the ticket? Yeah. It's hard to believe he couldn't win. Yeah. Yeah. Who will he take away votes from? Both, I think. I think he would take away from non-voters, anti-system people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, Maxime Bernier has not heard the conservatives in Canada. In Canada right. Right. Good point. Uh, some of his voters are were, were outside, were anti-system people, and so he took some of the conservatives, maybe a little bit, but uh, there's a lot of non-voters. There's a pool of non-voters that that is available there. Uh, and so. That's all. And all right, we are out of time. I want to thank you so much. <laughs> Merci, Aaron. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you. We will see you uh, here at the Snowden Deli on the next Corner Booth podcast. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you.